Cabinet ministers chime in on those arrested DNA members. The Defense Force commences its inoculation process and the Ministry of Health receives donated COVID tests. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Tuesday, March 23rd. The law applies to all of us, regardless of how we may think or how we may feel. That's what National Security Minister Marvin Dames told the press just ahead of the cabinet meeting this morning as he addressed the leader of the Democratic National Alliance's recent detainment at the Central Police Station yesterday. Here's Lorencia Smith with that story. National Security Minister Marvin Deems and the Attorney General Senator Carl Bethel both weighing in on the dramatic events that unfolded on Monday when the leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Arinthia Kumalafe, and nine other members were detained for some five hours for questioning at the Central Police Station as it relates to that unlawful demonstration in Parliament Square some three weeks ago by the party. Just before the weekly cabinet meeting, Minister Deems told reporters this. According to the commissioner, they marched without a permit. And they were told by officers they were obstructing traffic along the way before they got to Bay Street. And they were repeatedly told by officers to not to obstruct traffic. They continued. They came downtown and I believe that there was another demonstration taking place at the same time by the taxi drivers. A peaceful demonstration with a permit. The leader of the DNA and her team did not have a permit. But that was in the bigger problem, according to the commissioner. The bigger problem was this, that they proceeded to overrun the officers and take over parliament. Some have questioned why it took police three weeks to call the group in for questioning, while others claim that the act was political victimization. Minister Deems gave this response. Commissioner, he expressed this to me, and you know, what he went on to say, okay? He said, Minister, my, act, my officers did not take action that day because I did not want it to appear as if, you know, I was, I was doing something wrong or I wanted a confrontation on the day of parliament. So within his legal rights as the commissioner of police, he decided to proceed summarily. I heard some who were saying that this is, Hello. you know, this is political. Bring the proof. Meantime, the attorney general telling reporters that he was surprised about the DNA member's arrest, while adding that it's disturbing to him that there is a political class of Bahamians suggesting that they are immune to the rule of law. We are a constitutional democracy. That means that everybody is subject to the rule of law, and the appropriate agency to investigate any alleged breach of the law is the police. And therefore, the commission of, the, of police acts in his own deliberate judgment pursuant to the Constitution to perform his duty to investigate any allegation of a breach of the law. I heard some who were saying that this is, you know, this is political. Bring the proof. Both the Minister of National Security and Attorney General maintains that no one is above the law. I'm Laurentia Smith for JCN News. Tourism and Aviation Minister Dionisio Diaglar expresses his confidence in the return of the cruise industry in the Bahamas. This off the heels of two cruise lines, Crystal Cruise Lines and Royal Caribbean, returning to Bahamian waters in the coming months. Both of these cruise companies are anxious to get operational. Uh, they've been sitting in the water doing nothing. And uh, they decided that uh, the Bahamas is close enough to their main core market, South Florida. And this is an excellent place for them to start uh, home porting. There are one or two other companies that are discussing it with us. Nothing concrete yet to report. Uh, but the Bahamas is uh, getting a reputation as a place where uh, at least home porting can start now for the major cruise companies. The tourism ministry is also experiencing an increase in berthing requests from cruise lines. However, the rise in cruise lines coming to the Bahamas may not happen until next year. Right now, the berthing requests for the last six months of this year are up double digits, between 15 and 20 percent. 
but we're not sure whether they're going to return yet because the CDC hasn't made a determination. So we said, okay, certainly by 2022, they should be up and running. And if you compare the birthing requests at the Nassau cruise port for 2022 and compare it to our busiest year, 2019, those requests are up high single digits, uh, just under 10%. Uh, so we're encouraged that uh, when um, cruising re resumes, the Bahamas is going to be a, uh, a, a destination that the cruise companies will want to come to. And that is demonstrating itself in the amount of birthing requests. And that is good news for the, for the vendors that work downtown and for the shops that operate in this downtown area. Crystal announced earlier this month that it had made the Bahamas a home port and its Serenity ship will sail beginning July 3rd. Additionally, Royal Caribbean also announced that it set sail starting on June 12th with cruise packages for the Bahamas and Mexico. 12 cases of COVID-19 confirming a total of 26 new cases in country over a two-day period. For Sunday, March 21st, 14 cases of the virus was confirmed. And for Sunday, March 22nd, 12 cases were confirmed. A total of 10 cases on New Providence, one with a history of travel, eight on Grand Bahama, six on Eleuthera, one with a history of travel, and two on Abaco. These total cases pushed the country's national count to 8,900. 935. 936 are active cases, 26 of which are hospitalized, 23 considered moderately ill, with three in doctors' hospitals intensive care unit. A total of 24 cases recovered between the two days, pushing the total of recovered cases to 7,757. The country's death toll remains at 188. Some 73,721 tests have been completed to date. Defense Force Commodore Raymond King was the first Royal Bahamas Defense Force personnel to receive the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine yesterday. This much coming from a release from the force issued last evening. Conducted at the Defense Force base, the inoculations were led by the force's medical doctor, Lieutenant Commander Dr. Jerwin Johnson, along with the medical facility's professional staff. Also receiving vaccination was Ms. Lisa Adderley, the deputy permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security. Being the first in the organization to get vaccinated, Commodore King encourages officers and Marines to make the right decision. As a fighting force, where personal readiness is of utmost importance, it's critical, although voluntary, to consider the implications linked to not being vaccinated and exposed to the threat and the performance of our duties which requires us to interact with other nationals at sea where the risk is higher. Therefore, I encourage organizational members to follow my lead in leading from the front and accepting the vaccine to ensure their readiness as a fit and fighting force. With yesterday being the first day of vaccinations, the Royal Bahamas Defense Force will give their updates as to the numbers who would have voluntarily accepted the vaccine. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.